time. All right, we are live on John's Dungeon Corner from the Collective in Altamont Springs, Florida, where we just had Ian come and visit us for a couple days. So to all my adventuring friends out there and non adventurers NPCs, and all of you other folks out in the real world, I hope that uh, you, your loved ones, and your family are all right and kind of just blew by and said, hey, how you doing, and kept on going. But in case it didn't, come down to the Collective and have some fun. That's what we did. <laughs> it's... Hey, we got all kinds of cool stuff here. There was a restock, and there's stuff going out as we're talk as I'm talking right now. Even as I speak, there are items being put up on the shelves. But anyway, no, no, no. Ooh, we got some good stuff going on today. All right, so before I get into the nitty gritty of the show, which is uh, a, a fun loaded question today, uh, let me tell you about a couple things. First and foremost, on October 15th, it's the Halloween party here at the Collective. It's going to be an all day affair. So come early, have some fun. And come dressed up. The more the merrier, I always say. Just reading sketches. Collective, the, the collective Press is putting out the Halloween special. Oh, the Collective Press is putting out the Halloween special. I just heard by the ghostly voice in the background. Also, Saturday, November 5th. Don't forget, it's the Extra Life 33 Hours of Gaming Extravaganza. It starts at 10 o'clock on Saturday, November 5th. And it doesn't end until 6 o'clock. Sunday, November 6th. So that's 33 hours of gaming. And with daylight savings time, you know what that means? Another extra hour of gaming. So make sure you pin that in. During that day, we're going to have all kinds of wonderful things. But starting at 7 o'clock that night, we're going to have the big battle royale. The theme, we're going to attack the goblins who have abducted the fair princess. So the Adventurers Guild has put out a call for all adventurers from far and wide, from the four corners of the kingdom to come and aid in the rescue of the princess. Here's the catch. Because there's limited space on the battlefield, we're only going to take the first X amount of players. And once that X is filled up, that's all she wrote. All right, so make sure you come in and register. Uh, you can see Danny. You can see anybody here. Just say, hey, I want to register for the Big Battle Royale on uh, November 5th. That's Saturday, November 5th, 7 o'clock. I will put out more info as I go. I'll give you some more uh, insider secrets on the show. All right. Other than that, let's talk about a couple new things that have come in. We got three brand new box sets for role playing here uh, by Discami Publishing Company. Kind of cool. One is a box set for uh, Pixies. It's a Pixie role playing adventure. It's a one shot. These are all one shots, but it's pretty neat. Um, it's got a rule book in it, uh, some stories, some character sheet handouts, and uh, some Pixie dice. Can't beat that, right? This one's uh, Pixies. Nice sim simple. Then we move on to the Demon City. That's a very neat one there. Also, once again, it has some six scenarios. This one has six character sheets in it and four custom demonic city dice. Okay. That sounds pretty crazy. All right. And last but not least, of course, what would any adventure be without worms? And we'll let you kind of figure what that means. All right. Yes, yes. It means dragons. All right. This one also has six scenarios, seven characters, and four custom worm dice. So these are all really neat. You can incorporate them into your campaigns as little side adventures. And uh, should be a lot of fun. Should be a lot of fun. And that's from Discami Publishing Company. Good stuff going on there. We got a restock of dice, as you can see. We got all kinds of cool stuff. Solid dice, fluorescent dice, transparent dice, big dice. Bigger dice. <laughs> so we got them all. And cool colors. We got, I mean, this is actually a really neat one. It's a, it's a brown. It's the Norse Foundry dice tray in brown. Very cool. Wasn't available before or sold out if it was. So uh, come on down and check everything out. All right. I put the starter set and the essentials kit up here for a reason. A lot of players nowadays have started in these. And that has led to the big question. Hey, what would be the best adventuring 
group that we can square out with with about four or five characters. Hello, love. My wife is on in DC. How you doing? How you doing? And my brother's on from New York. All right. So we got some folks on. Good, good, good. So we can get the nitty gritty of things. Well, so that's a big, that's a loaded question as I was talking to Brendan and a couple of folks about. Uh, and everybody has their ideas as to what's what, what's best. So, oh, yes, the T-shirt. Yes, yes. Dungeons and Dragons. So I'm going to give you what I think and why. And then I'm going to bring out some folks that I've talked about and uh, you've kind of seen here and there. And they're going to, I'm going to ask them some questions and then I'm going to get to that question. But so here we go. My thoughts on that. All right. I've always thought that the road, you definitely have to have a road. There's a lot of traps, a lot of lock chests, lock doors, a lot of things that the rogue can do that he does. Re- that character does really, really well. Okay. Can other characters do some of those things? Sure. But I, I still believe that the rogue does it best. And that's one of the characters that I definitely think should be one of the founding members of any adventuring group. Then I have always said that the lack of magic can be detrimental. So with that, there's of course the clerical healing magic of the clerics uh, that's divinely inspired. And then there, of course, there's the magic, the, what I like to call the celestial big bang magic of wizards and warlocks and sorcerers. Now, any one of those three can fill the gap. My favorite's always been the wizard. And simply because later on, as the character, as the character advances in levels, they start getting all these neat little uh, additional things that they can do, like create scrolls. And uh, they, they, they have access to a lot of different things that help the party out overall. Okay. So the wizard, although the sorcerer is a very, is right there. You know, if this is the, the number one, I put him at like 1.1.5, 1. 1. you know, as, as the next guy in line, he has access to a lot more spells. Um, and doesn't have to study them. They're just whatever he has in the brain. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. Now, here's where it gets kind of sticky and tricky. There's all kinds of fighters. There's the fighter, okay, which is an awesome, awesome, just one-man army. Then you've got the barbarian that when they rage, they're like second to none. Uh, They take half damage. They inflict more damage. They're just, wow. And then, of course, there's the paladin. The Paladin's a really neat character because later on, as they go up in level, they have that neat ability to heal people and cast uh, uh, clerical magic. So I think that's a really neat. So of the three, who would I pick, though? Mm. Of course, let's not forget the Ranger. Although the the Ranger, the Bards, um, I kind of leave those out at first simply because they're more of a hybrid support character. Although, once again, a Ranger with dual scimitars up at the front? mm, I don't know. You know, so... Balance it all out, the flavor of what you want to do. I would go with, and I'm juggling, and I would catch the paladin. Why? Because later on, when I team him up with my cleric, I got some great healing power. That's why. Okay? And at the lower levels, healing power means staying alive longer. So there would be my group, with my fifth probably being a bard. All right, so here we go. So my front, my, my, my first four would be the rogue. The wizard, the paladin, and the cleric, and it has a great support character because they're an all-around kind of great guy, character, the bard. So there you have it. All right, I've stated it. Now, that's just my opinion. Hey, there's, there's a, a whole wide range of, of characters in this book, just to start out with. Not even bother with any other class anywhere else, just in this book. So you got to kind of sit there and see what it is you really want to do with your group but let me tell you what if you want to stay alive make sure you get at least one cleric in there all right so with that being said and you've heard enough about me now i'm going to introduce you to some folks that you've probably you know if you've been on the show before you've seen them because they've kind of popped in and out and i always talk about them because they're fat my family and i always say they play they one of them runs a game so here they are my son antonio and his fiance sarah all right welcome to the show Thanks for coming, bud. Of course. Good, good seeing you. Yes, 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 yes. It's always good seeing you guys. Yeah. All right, I'm going to bring Brendan out later. Actually, Brendan, come on before you go. Brendan's got to go. Oh, no, I froze. Wait a minute. 
Oh. I mean, maybe on freeze us. We always freeze. We're so, we're, we're so we fast. Go. Now we're back. Look, there we go. That's so awesome. I'm gonna bring Brendan out because Brendan's been playing a while too, and then running games. So Brendan, the yeah. question was, if I started a group with four or five characters, what would be the best group makeup? The best group makeup. Sure. You gotta have a fighter. Gotta have a but fighter. You can also make your fighter a dwarf. That way, you're killing two birds with one stone. You're representing <laughs> the dwarf and the fighter. And there's always somebody in the group that can only play a dwarf fighter. So that's okay. <laughs> there you go. But well, we were talking about race. We're talking about this. Gotta, gotta, gotta have a cleric. Gotta have a cleric. Okay, so we both agree on the cleric. Cleric keeps him alive. Yep. Right? Yep. That's, okay, so we got a fighter thing. and a cleric. Right. You gotta have a wizard. A wizard. Okay. Not a sword. sorcerer or a warlock. A wizard. Well, sorcerers are dog wizards. I mean that that's a we always call the sorcerer a dog right. wizard because they don't have a spell book. Right. They're just kinda like, oh, they're just naturally a okay. dog wizard. They're they're looked down on by wizards. Okay. By real wizards that work All out. Right. Because they just have natural ability. Then you gotta have the thief. You gotta have the rogue. Gotta yeah. have that rogue. All right, so what about the fifth? What would be your support character? If you had to have one or a bugbear monk. A bugbear monk? No, definitely not. No <laughs> monk's a bugbear no monk. Bug bug Don't bug. ask for that game. He's no, only kidding. We're not, we're not gonna be playing bugbear. <laughs> a fifth one, you can always put in a paladin. Extra healing. The druid is always good. Um, the bard is fun to play. They just die all the time. <laughs> you know, but you gotta keep some. Well, you can only pick one now. You got so so far you've got your fighter, you've got your wizard. Oh, you got your cleric, you got your wizard, and you got your rogue. What's that fifth die? Uh, you, know, you could put a paladin. You no, need... but what would, I need one. Which one would you definitely put in there? I put in the barbarian. The barbarian. Yeah. Hey, because... remember I told you about that rage is like more Oof. fighting, more fighting. Yes. yes. Keep the others alive, right? There you go. Yeah. Throw you him out in front. The fighter needs to be sensible. A half the barbarian. A half for a barbarian. To, he just needs to charge. There you yes. go. I, I think that's what. <laughs> I think you're set. You're there it set. is. And he's been doing this for a while, so I've been doing it. Yes, yes, I've been doing it unsuccessfully. <laughs> Every time I try and play a bard, they die at second level. Every single time. It's a great right. character. To play. See what I'm saying? All right. All right. Well, thank you for right. coming by. That's and all I got. Sharing your knowledge with us. <laughs> That's all I got. I got. All right. So you see, we have a lot of fun here. That was Brendan. He owns this crazy place called the Collective, where we all come and have a a good time. Hey, Willie, saying hey. And, yeah, DC hey, said Brent, hi too. And Brent, what's up? Yes, the barbarian. DC plays a barbarian, so he knows all about it. So, okay, so ladies first. So let's slide over here and oh, say, boy. all right, Sarah. So you you haven't run a game yet, but you've been playing for a little bit, and we're gonna get to how you got involved in that in just a second. But you gotta pick a group of five. Let's go with the five. I'm gonna answer it for five, and we'll put your top four and then add that fifth one. All right. So who would they be? Cleric. They keep everybody alive. Oh, the cleric is definitely up there on the, at the top. However, I've never played a cleric, so they're, they're important, but but they've kept you alive, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we got the cleric. I like to do all the other fun stuff. All right, so who's um, next? Um, I don't know. I like my sorcerer. A sorcerer. He, he was Bren was bad talking my sorcerer, but I like my sorcerer. Okay, because they get. <laughs> I mean, they can't just fling spells out there that they know. Yeah. Okay, and it's just like they don't have to know them. They can cast the same spell X amount of times, no matter what. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so we got the sorcerer. So now the sorceress is out there throwing. That's got some magic. Okay, well now we got magic. Um, I'd say the barbarian because you can throw them out front and they can take a hit with everything. Oh, the barbarian! Don Carlos would have thrown you to the front, <laughs> and you can just take damage. <laughs> but don't worry, because we got a cleric to heal you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we got the cleric. We got the sorceress and we got the barbarian. What else? Um, Paladin, because they're a little bit more hefty for the fighting part, but they also can heal. Hefty, hefty, hefty. Hefty. <laughs> okay, so there go four. Oh, now, what gosh. about that fifth character? What do we do with about that fifth character? Really, anyone can fit in there. Once I'm you a, have those four. Who are you going to fit? I don't know. Um, Not a bard. No, not I, a bard? I, I love the bards, but... She loves the bards, but... They usually get... Killed or they get us killed. <laughs> I'm not sure what that's all about. We'll talk about that some other time, I'm sure. <laughs> that's a personal experience, I think. <laughs> all right, so we still got that fifth slot open now. It's um, not a bard, obviously. I'm stuck between a ranger or a druid. A ranger or a druid. Okay, why? What, what's the, what's the... So the ranger... See, I would pick an archer ranger because you have some of that, like... If you can't get to the people and you need to shoot at them, you have distance. Ah, ranged combat. Yep, yep, yep. 
And then for the druid, you have, like, you still have the spells. They still can be an up front front fighter, or they can hang back and throw their spells, or they shape shift. Ah, there we go. Okay. So I think I would try and do the druid. Okay, so the druid. So what we got here is at the top of the food chain, we had (laughs) the cleric. Yeah, because of (laughs) the cleric. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, everybody's agreeing with her, but a druid, you're seeing this yellow and druid because I'm very important. <laughs> she is very important. Uh, absolutely. Group. All right, so I, I, <laughs> at the top of the book, then we have the cleric, followed by the sorceress. Then we've got the, the barbarian, barbarian, and then we have paladin. the paladin because and... they're they're hefty, hefty, hefty. And last but not least, the druid because they they kind of a well rounded support yeah, character. They're... All right. They can so step in wherever they need to. All right. Now we're stepping into places. All right. Yeah. So let's get, they step into crazy stuff sometimes. They do. All right. So now let's swing over here to Antonio. Now, Antonio's been playing, wow, what? Like, not giving away his age, but about 19, 19 years now? Well, I turned 30 this year, and I've been playing since <laughs> yeah. I was a child. Well, okay. So it's at least 20 some, maybe, maybe as far as 20 years. Wow. That's two decades. Crazy. All mm-hmm. right. So you start out as a player. A young player, then you became kind of like a teenage player, and then you start kind of running things. But now you're actually running like two or three different games. So, with all that in mind, you got five folks that you have to make up your adventuring party. Who are they? So, in my opinion, you don't necessarily need a cleric anymore, not in five years. <gasps> the and the main reason the why is because if you choose a sorcerer who's divine soul, oh, not only can they like do me. all the arcane magic, but they can do the divine oh, magic Oh, here too. we go. You're telling them a secret. So <laughs> you pick the, the sorcerer who's a divine soul. Boom. Now you have a cleric in the main. All right. So number one, we got the sorcerer. Uh, uh, divine soul. Uh, what? Divine soul. A divine, uh, divine soul sorcerer at the Which top is, of the food that's chain. That's what I play in your campaign. Okay. Then right. if you pick a paladin, not only now do you have a frontline fighter, but they can heal themselves. So they're going to be much prolong and they're some of the best damage dealers because of smite ah oh, smite okay so we got we got the divine sorcerer and the paladin we're going the divine route then you either pick a bard or a rogue a bard or a rogue because no, which one though you can't i know uh, so it depends on how you want to do it so you can't rope and lock. if you do the rogue you have someone that can help do potentially a lot of damage but if you pick an arcane trickster rogue, oh. you now have more magic. More magic. So then that's probably the way I would go just because I like to do lots of damage. So Divine trickster. You go with the arcane rogue. trickster rogue. Woo. So we, we got, got divinity. Magic, magic, magic. We got magic, magic. Oh, look, more magic. <laughs> right. All right. Then you go with an artificer. Oh, good grief. But you pick the. Wait, wait, wait. wait. We're going to try to stick to the. Oh, okay. just the players. Yeah, we're gonna say okay. Listen, we're gonna stick to the players' handbook. Now we're getting a little. These guys, okay. The question was asked by a new play group of okay, players. Well, you just, I know the group. Okay. You asked what my group would be. Okay. See, so, see, see. Okay. So, okay. Instead of that, you pick a druid. A but druid. You pick Circle the moon druid because now he's also a tank that can heal. The, the druid is in there. Okay. So now you can pretty much put whatever you want in this fifth slot. This fifth slot is just like open. Okay. So what is it though? What is it? So it depends on which kind of route you want to go. If you want to go with the route with another tank, you pick a fighter. But fighter. you pick a fighter who's a warforged uh, race because his armor class goes Base. ridiculous. We're Sorry. not talking Again. about races. Oh, well, he got to say the dwarf. So, okay, the warforged. But the dwarf is in the player's handbook. Oh, the right? dwarf is in the so, player's handbook. Forgetting that, then you just go, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> we got to keep it simple. We're Back trying to, to keep basics. it simple. Back to basics. I'm never, I don't do well with basics. <laughs> no, no, but a fighter's good. But what um, race? The race rule doesn't matter, but no. okay, a fighter. So instead of a fighter, then. Okay, nope, they, drop the fighter. Throw out the fighter. Probably a warlock, because the warlock is probably the most versatile class in the game. Ah, so now it's because magic again. Depending on <laughs> Willie which, goes Sparty Pants. <laughs> so depending on which warlock you pick will determine. Okay. He can fill in whatever role you That's need. That's true, because the fang. Because you if you pick thing. Pack of the Blade. Yep. You now have a more melee-oriented warlock. If you go with the uh, the Devil Pact. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. You have someone that's a little bit more fire and damage-oriented, and then you have one that does more illusionary when you pick the Fae. Right. Okay, so there you have it. All right, so let's go. Wait, let's re- recap. So, wow. He, 
the he sorcerer. Down to like we got the, the divine class. sorcerer, right? <laughs> oh, he, he really got into it. Okay, well, that's good, though. And then after that, we went to the paladin, paladin. because he's hefty and can cast magic and can keep himself going. Doesn't matter which oath either. Then we went with the druid of the moon, moon, circle, circle of the moon, moon, because, well, you know, more damage and more magic. <laughs> There's a theme going here, okay? There is a theme. Now, what was that fourth guy? The row, because we can just stab people in the back. And as an arcane trickster, we can just cast magic as we stab them in the back. You can go fireball. You see what I'm saying? You can dodge some damage. Oh my gosh. And last but not least, was the warlock. The warlock. And depending on which, okay. So there you have it. Now, we've gone from one extreme to the other extreme. And if you really, really want to talk about the, 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 the nuances and the, the intricacy, intricacies of a certain class, there's a Tony. He's here every Wednesday night at by 6 or 6 30. And if you want to sit down and say, here's what I want to do. Can you help me? He'll go, okay, here you go. Now, <laughs> your, your head may be spinning after it's all said and done, but boy, you'll have one heck of a character that'll probably drive your DM crazy. And that being said, with all of his magic, like characters. Yeah, all five of those characters. When you have open magic. a book and start looking at a character that throws spells, it looks so confusing, but it, in all honesty, it it once you get the flow of it and somebody breaks down like, okay, this is what it really is, it's so easy to start throwing those things out. Yep, and then until you run out and then you just pull out a sword and start going and That's out. why you have your cantrip. Unless you're a druid. Hey, Donna, how are you? Howdy. Here's your first time on the show. Round of applause. Hey. Welcome to the show. So anyway, all right, so here's the neat thing. Okay, so what cantrips are good for. <laughs> That's true. Cantrips. Oh my gosh. The game has changed. Now you got cantrips, so you never really run out of spells. Matt, now see if Matt was here, he'd tell you the same thing. Because he plays DD. Don't let him kid you. All right. And congratulations to you, sir. We'll leave it at that. Yeah. Okay. Now, <laughs> so talk about so now you saw um, like I was saying, you saw the differences. And now, Sarah, I gotta say, I if you're going right. down a dark dungeon hallway. The there's, you're going to be going, this is, this will be her sorcerer. Tick, tack, tick, tack, boom. Cause there's no rogue. <laughs> I used to, to know who I would kill. Although I know yeah, a rogue that used to sit there and discover trust by setting him off. So I don't know. That's what we can send the barbarian to do. <laughs> DC, you see what they're going to do to your barbarian. <laughs> oh, we just make sure he's raging. Uh, bro, you look so short between. <laughs> wow. Okay, see, this is. Can you can we rate? Let me see. Can we race people and get them off of here? Hold on. No. <laughs> I'm gonna kick you out. All right. So, another question that comes to being too. Also, okay. So, Don, you're a DM. You haven't got a DM much, but okay. So, you're a DM. Where? What do you think? You you've actually played in in the starter set a little bit, and you've actually kind of run it and seen it run. What do you think about that starter set? I think this is – so, in my opinion, this was a good start if you already have a few players. But if you were – if you're a DM and just a player alone, I would actually go with the Essentials Kit. Why? Because in the Essentials Kit, they introduced the mechanic that was introduced with um, one of the other books, and it allows you to have NPC PCs at the same time. Ah, so they actually came out in here. They have it set up to where you could actually be just a DM and a player, and the DM helps run the other members of your party. So you technically could have a full party with just two with players. just the DM and a player. <clears throat> oh, that's a good point. You know, and I haven't brought that up before because uh, I usually just kind of you know we're rolling through. But that's a great point. Now. With that being said, I would suggest if you're going to do that, that you are definitely a little bit more familiar with the rules than just picking this up for the first time. Okay, so let's say, you know, maybe you live in Alaska somewhere in a hut with just two of you and you want to play D&D, &D, that would be the way to do it. Or in and it's, Florida and it's in a storm. Or in Florida in a storm, yes. That can happen. It just did. Uh, but anyway, that is a great point about the Essentials Kit. And I will say this, together they're amazing. This is probably the least expensive set of anything starter that you can put together and be ready to run a campaign pretty much to what about fifth or seventh level i think this goes doesn't it uh, i always say seventh level but one through six okay so up to sixth level so when you combine them both you probably get to about seventh or eighth actually because there's more monsters there's about i think this goes to fourth level fifth 
to fifth. So there's enough to take you probably to about eighth level if you combine them both. And it gets you kind of used to it. So that way you can grow. Exactly. So, all right. That's good stuff, isn't Sorry, it? Sorry, DC, we sacrificed you. DC, yeah, they sacrificed you. So listen, no matter what your where you're at in your D&D experience, where you're a really experienced DM player or you're just starting out, these are great. Anytime a brand new player sits down in front of you, this is absolutely what I would say is the way to go. Nothing against homebrewed, but I have always thought that starting out the players with the basics, it's just like teaching anything, anyone, anything to anyone. You start out with the basics, and then as they go on, you can branch them out and teach them all kinds of crazy things. All right? He's got you playing the war forged and okay, so not that that's a bad thing. All right, as you once you get used to this and the basics and the initiative and what all these dice all do and all that, I think it's a great idea to branch out and say, "Ooh, a war forged fighter would be cool. Ooh, uh, uh, a tiefling warlock, or you know, maybe a, a halfling rogue. Those are and then the halflings have different sub races, and we didn't even talk about the races that you can put together with this, except for." Brendan and Antonio, but that's another thing that's a, for a wholly, totally different discussion, I think. And I should probably mention that the Divine Soul Sorcerer is not in the yeah. book. Ah, there we go. Okay, so, all right, so let's go back to the Sorcerer. What do we do about so, the Sorcerer now? Well, at that point, mm. you run into a serious problem because my party doesn't work without that Divine Soul Sorcerer. Oh, man. I'd okay. have to redo the whole party. Okay, so let's redo the whole party. The basics is the best way to start. Well said, John. Thank you, DC. You know, it's, it's it's important. Okay, so we got to back up a little bit and give Antonio a chance to redo his party because it was based. See, now, and this is a good point that he brought up. His whole party, the way that whole party meshed well together was based on that one character, okay? Because of its abilities and everybody just kind of uh, synergizes around that character. So, okay, let's go back to the basics. Who do we got? So... If you go back to the cleric, you could still have a cleric that's not just uh, based on healing. So depending on, matter of fact, I just created one. The divines, the cleric who's the tempest domain gives you a lot of just kind of brute domain. power. It is. That's okay. where I built DC. Brute Star power <laughs> gives you some brute power, but okay. still some healing at the same time. All right. So we got the tempest cleric. So the paladin's not going to change. The paladin I think stays paladin the paladin. The better. Yep. Um, Your robe. The rogue still won't oh, change. Oh, don't tell him. He might forget the guy, too. <laughs> no, he won't. <laughs> the rogue, the rogue. still won't change because our King Trickster's in there. Okay. Um, let's see. The, the, the druid won't change. The druid won't change. Out. Okay, so the only one that's changed so far is just the, 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 the sorcerer, really. Well, that's just when you decide that fourth, that final slot. You need someone that's pretty much mainly arcane at this so point. So either your warlock is... So you would have to, if you go with Warlock, you actually limit yourself on the Arcane a little bit because they can only cast maybe one or two spells a day for a while. Right. So they don't really... Give right, you so the, the, good, he's good. a little out. So I'm debating between the Wizard and... <laughs> oh, what did DC said? I love it. it. Thanks, Antonio. Great character. You helped me build. Lots of fun on Tempest. Yeah, that is a good so build. So I would probably pick the wizard because they can have the opportunity to do whatever to get all the spells that you're going to find okay that's the only thing that the wizard has over the sorcerer is that they have the ability to get all the spells whereas ah. the sorcerer is limited to whatever they pick all right so here we go so the final checklist makes it the the tempest cleric the paladin the druid the rogue and the wizard because the druid can also cast spells too so you don't need a full the full healing cleric. Ah, that's true. That's actually very true. And if you want to be one of those upfront clerics that just beat on things, there's also the war domain cleric. Yeah. That's got a really neat little ability that allows you to use your wisdom modifier as additional attacks. They're called, what are they called? Uh, They're bonus attacks. Bonus attacks. So basically you go up there, hit the orc. Ah, uh, he looks like he's about to die. Good. I'm going to, I'm going to, what is that called? I'm going to, uh, I can find out real quick. What, what, whatever it's called, I can. I, I pray to my God for an extra, and boom, hit him again. Because you get X amount of extra attacks based on your wisdom modifier as a war domain cleric. I don't remember everything. I just know what cool stuff happens. It's a lot to remember, guys. It's a lot. 
Uh, when you get into the Dungeons and Dragons, you will see that there's always something new to learn. All right, what's, you'll get it's better. called War Priest, is what the feature is called. Oh, I'm sorry, it's called War Priest. You're the War Priest, you're not even a war domain, it's a War Priest. That's what the, the, the feature is called. Okay, so there it is. You go up there and you just beat things, and then you heal your body. So you're a, a bruiser that heals, you have a soft side. And remember, <laughs> you're always doing your good job of healing so long as nobody dies. Now, that doesn't mean that just because they fell and you didn't get to them right away that you're not doing your job. Yes, that, that I'm glad you said that. Clerics, clerics get a, a bad, uh, a bad rap on that because a uh, characters remember your character doesn't die immediately. You have to make save uh, saves and that kind of thing. So a cleric can get you back to where you're just conscious, or to at least stabilize. Spare the dying. Spare the dying. So they have a lot of spells that help the party. Because sometimes you just can't stop. You, if the ogre, ogre's not going to sit there and let you heal somebody and stop beating you while you go, excuse me, Mr. Ogre, may I heal my friend? And he will go, of course, carry on. No! He's going to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then hit you with the cudgel and beat you. <laughs> that's what they do. Because that's what I would do. As if I was the ogre. <laughs> and since I'm a game master, I would be the ogre, technically speaking. Not that I'm ogrish, but yes. All right. Anyway, so... <laughs> Thank you guys for being on the show. I appreciate you. And thanks for coming out. I know this is one of the few Fridays that you guys are available. So it's mm -hmm. always awesome to bring family out. Remember the cool stuff from, uh, oh, I can't remember the name, Dick Scotty. All right. They got all these new three uh, adventures out. And we got dice and we got starter sets. And October 15th is a big Halloween party. And November 5th and 6th is the ex gaming extravaganza. 33 hours of gaming non-stop and i will see you next friday at john's dungeon corner so may the road always rise up to meet your feet and may all your adventures be successful don't forget the road don't forget the road i will see you next friday from the collective here in altamont springs florida thanks for tuning in